and welcome to the special Outlook webinar on World Menstruation Hygiene Day, or Menstrual Hygiene Day, celebrated across the world. I'm very delighted to be hosting this particular webinar because I think it's just so important to focus on menstrual hygiene every day of the year and every month of the year, even during COVID times, where these are issues that are anyway not spoken about, but we may forget to speak about them again. So thank you for this Menstrual Hygiene Day that brings us back the conversation around the taboos and the myths associated with menstruation. In a survey conducted by the National Family Health Organization, it was found out that only 36% of women in India use sanitary pads. In a survey conducted by an NGO, it was found in 2014 that 23 million girls drop out of school because of lack of mental health hygiene facilities. Not only that, girls on an average miss five days of school during their period for the same reason. A lack of use of menstrual hygiene products also means that women and girls are at risk of diseases such as cervical cancer, hepatitis B, urinary tract infections, as well as reproductive tract infections. But little changes because of the stereotypes and the taboos associated with this very natural biological process. So this conversation is essential. I'm delighted to be joined in this conversation with two people from a company that has combined product, which is the sanitary pad, with social purpose, and that is Nine. Welcome to the webinar, Richa Singh, CEO of Nine, and Amar Tulsiyan, the founder and director. Thank you so much for joining me on this conversation, on this very, very important conversation, I must say, on Menstrual Hygiene Day. Thank okay. you. Thanks so much, Agrata. And uh, today being Menstrual Hygiene Day, I think we should dive right into it and make the most of this uh, opportunity. We've tagged this uh, Break the Shame because we want to really break the shackles of taboo and misconceptions. And uh, Richa, let's start with you. How has Nine launched into breaking the shame when it comes to menstrual hygiene? I think I'll start by uh, building on to what you said that even today, penetration of this category is very limited. However, over the last two to three years, the government and a lot of private companies have done a lot and stepped up the game over here. The government has started in a big way by communicating about menstruation. Of course, from the private sector, we saw movies like Padman. But of course, companies like ours, and when we did launch, uh, I, I would say Amar's vision really was coming up with a nine movement to not just offer a product, but raise a lot of awareness, talk about it. So there have been a lot of initiatives right from the, right from the beginning, um, where we went into schools and colleges. A lot of people from our team went and tapped into panchayats, spoke to the villagers, you know, with a small way initiating breaking the shame in the masses where it really was needed. And coming back to what a government is doing, you know, we often don't talk about it. Not many of us know about it. But over the last few years, each and every state government has stepped up their state budgets for menstrual hygiene. They are putting in both efforts and monetary support to make sure that the new generation of girls that is coming now is aware of menstrual hygiene. They have experienced safe menstrual hygiene with sanitary napkins. So, so there's a lot that's being done. We at our level. Yes, we've done uh, you know, small contributions by coming up with campaigns like uh, Suraksha Bhandan, like father-daughter campaign. There was a very cute moment in the father-daughter campaign where the daughter hugs her father holding a pile of napkins. So all these initiatives have been towards breaking the scene. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to talk about Suraksha Bandhan in a little bit uh, because I found that just absolutely fascinating. But uh, could you uh, take us back into, you know, you're a group of young entrepreneurs under the Make in India umbrella, a traditional Indian management style combined with uh, decades of MNC experience. How did you uh, decide to go into this and then particular sanitary pads and what have been the challenges, the opportunities that you found in this field? With the 25 years of my experience uh, into various industries and running various businesses, so nine was a, a new diversification for us. And uh, 
So the best success for any business is the combination of three M's. Uh, so the best utilization of man, machine, and material. So that's something the the best blend that Nine could really uh, come up with and deliver. So that was the key to the success uh, of any business and uh, of course for Nine. So we invested in the best machines. Uh, so we have set up a state of art plant in Gorakhpur in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, with the most hygienic international standards that needs to be maintained uh, being a hygiene product. Then uh, we got the best talents in the industries in production, sales, marketing, finance. So that is the governance of the whole uh, system that like uh, that is delivering the quality product right in time. And then uh, talking about uh, selection of good quality materials, raw materials, we are importing almost more than 50 to 60 percent of raw materials and selection of those uh, products and really delivering an affordable uh, price napkins with a quality product in the market was the challenge that as a teamwork we have been able to do so we see a lot of opportunity into this category as we say see that the users is quite low uh, so the market is going rapidly and with the kind of awareness is going on uh, all around so we see a good scope uh, for nine and uh, it's all always a teamwork, so that is delivering, yeah. The other thing that you're very passionate about is the biodegradable aspect of it. Uh, you are the only company that provides a package. Uh, if you could talk about that, uh, you know, that has been one of the complaints with this uh, business. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that was a big challenge, like what we uh, really addressed. Nine uh, can probably say we were the first brand to address this issue. Uh, providing biodegradable disposal bags with every pack of nine which is really like and being liked very well by the consumers. We are getting a lot of positive feedback around it because a safe disposal was a challenge. And even we are getting an appreciation for this, that the brand which is committed for the environment. So uh, the, definitely the consumer can trust uh, for the quality of the product. So this was uh, one of the reasons, uh, like for a very, very short of, uh, period of time, Nine has become so popular amongst the consumers. Right. And Richard, uh, you know, you mentioned Suraksha Bandhan and the father-daughter. I'd love for you to talk about it because I really feel very often men are not part of this conversation. And Nine has been very interesting in that way because you did the uh, Women's Day Marathon run, which was all men who ran for menstrual hygiene and then these ads. And uh, you've made a you know, concerted effort to include men in this conversation about menstruation. Right. Uh, you know, there's a fact, we all know, uh, there's research around it, that men are a key part or uh, people who actually go and buy sanitary napkins for their wives, daughters, or sisters. Right? They are the people who actually go and shop this product. Uh, yet, there seems to be a whole lot of stigma in part of the society where women simply differ, don't even mention this in front of their fathers, husbands, or brothers. Right? And when we were sitting in house and discussing this, you know, all our three founders are men and uh, they were so comfortable talking about it and we smiled and we said, you know, so why can't every family be as comfortable? So that was part of also the thought along with the fact that yes, women, men are important uh, to the purchasing decision. Uh, we started with the Suraksha Bandhan campaign. That's when it, uh, we reached out to the brothers saying that, you know, you protected your sister throughout. Uh, from bullying in the streets, from, you know, uh, bad grades in school. So why not be with her and give her comfort and protection during uh, her periods? And it was an award-winning campaign. It did very well. And that inspired our second campaign for father-daughters. You know, it's, it's going to be really a blessing and it breaks a table forever if a father can actually speak to his daughter and tell her that, well, now you're growing up. A healthy part of growing up is menstruation. And this is how you can stay healthy and comfortable. So that's where we had a father trying to talk to his daughter and uh, she realizes that the father is struggling and she picks up a napkin and a husband. So it was a very emotional moment again, a very talked about campaign. So we've tried and continued on that and it's been amazing to see that how government has also supported this. So government mm -hmm. has come up with so many campaigns and ads going on in uh, theaters where you have Akshay Kumar coming on a cycle and, and talking about important personal hygiene and how little it costs. If this costs 25, 30, 35 rupees. Most of the Indians can afford it. So that's been the spirit and thought behind it. I said, um, you know, uh, I like we found out in the survey 36% penetration when it comes to the use of sanitary pads amongst girls and women. So what are the 
challenges or are there any that you experience when it comes to this low penetration and reaching out in rural India and all over India? So uh, definitely it was not a challenge, it was uh, really an opportunity for us that uh, the users being so low. So rather than just supplying our product to the existing users, uh, through all our campaigns, we are just trying to create the uh, market uh, for the new users and building up the category as well. And we have already placed our products in more than 2 lakh retail outlets throughout the country. And by the end of this year, uh, we are committed that nine will be available across all the 733 districts in the country. And our team is already on it. And uh, just supplying the right quality product at an affordable price was the task that we have taken up. And uh, I think uh, the whole team is ad addressing that very well. Right. I, 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 you know, uh, I want to pick up on what Richa said, Amar, and ask you this question about public-private partnership. How do you think this is going to go forward? It's very heartening to hear that the government has been very supportive and has the budgets for menstrual hygiene as well. What would you suggest is the way forward to increase this penetration? So we have approached uh, many state governments and the central governments and many of the policy makers uh, who are addressing this issue uh, very positively. Everyone is realizing the fact that the users in the country is quite low. And uh, alone the government can't do and even we as a company can't do. So everyone has its own limitations. But together we all can do. So with that thought, uh, we are getting a lot of support from the government agencies, working with the ASHA workers, working with the self-help groups. So we are just trying to uh, mobilize uh, all the uh, people uh, like these ASHA workers. They can directly communicate to the uh, users who have some taboos or myths uh, that they don't... Uh, except using sanitary napkins. Affordability is not that big a challenge. So the awareness is a bigger challenge that we see. So that is something with the a PPP model definitely that can uh, create the change needs for almost 25 crore females in the country who are the non-users for sanitary napkins. Uh, so that can definitely be achieved in a shorter period of time with the, this kind of model uh, that can work along. And Richa, you know, the ASHA workers model is also very interesting because I think uh, one thing that we don't mention often enough that, uh, you know, menstruation uh, health and hygiene is also about empowerment. You know, women taking control of their own bodies, understanding the needs and of their own bodies and servicing those needs without any form of guilt or shame. And uh, part of empowerment is also some sort of, uh, you know, financial independence. So, you know, I found your model with the ASHA workers very interesting and I'd love for you to share that with everyone. Thanks, Advaita. Um, I do want to highlight, you know, there are two from uh, issues or needs over here. One is distribution and availability. Uh, sanitary napkins still remains as one of the most underpenetrated categories in the country. Just to give you a perspective, diapers, which are baby diapers, which is a newer category, is far more widely distributed. The category is also much more expensive. Yet, there's more acceptance in the trade and people of this category. If I look at packaged snacks, you know, with your chips and uh, biscuits, uh, they are three times more available in India than sanitary napkins are. So there is this whole taboo in the retailers also somewhere in rural India that they find this category untouchable. The gradual shift is happening, but it's still there. And secondly, the shame with women that they are not so comfortable stepping out of the house or seldom they don't, right? And they don't want to ask their men to go and buy this. So that gap also exists. And of course, awareness remains the issue, right? So this is where the ASHA worker model comes in very useful. Government is the best, um, I would say, uh, organization to collaborate with. They have the most organized programs and infrastructure for a private player. It does require a whole lot of understanding and perseverance to make something solid and big and impactful with the government. But I do feel in the long run, it will pay off. And when I specifically talk about ASHA workers, so for example, if we can uh, come up with something very, very organized with our ASHA workers, which we are, we are testing in a small way in the UP rural areas, that pool can give us not only educational benefits where these women can go and educate 20, 30, 40 more, but suppose we give them a pack of napkins, right, or 10 packs of napkins at a subsidized rate they can in turn go and sell it to their friends and community and earn a small margin. Even if they end up earning 200 to 300 rupees a month selling a few packets, that will be a very, very impactful change. She in her house will get a little more financially empowered 
and earn the respect of her family members while also supporting her family for that. And this is a very sustainable way in a country like ours. So small start, but we do hope if we persevere, we'll make a big impact. I think that's wonderful, you know, and I find this fascinating because, you know, you've always heard of the big makeup companies doing this sort of uh, woman to woman, uh, you know, sales work and that an essential product really like, um, like sanitary pads is also following this model is very, very innovative, uh, I must say, and, and my compliments for that. And uh, Amar, you know, uh, going back to, you know, the whole make in India and uh, how do you compare to the other products available in the market in the present day? Now, what do we see is uh, nine uh, for us is a business with a social cause, and uh, so we don't see any competition with the existing players. Rather, because uh, the category uh, has is bound to grow uh, with the kind of awareness and uh, the way we are talking here on this panel and many other platforms that the uses is so low. So a lot of CSR activities are mobilizing these issues of uh, addressing the issue of awareness. So we really see it as a business opportunity rather than any competition. Just delivering the right product uh, is the thing that we are already doing. And uh, we really, uh, like when we compare our country with China, which has the same size of population, the users in China is more than 90%. They already have a category size. Uh, the Senate inactive sales there is almost 75,000 crores a year. And in India, we are just selling 5,000 crore worth of sanitary napkins. So we are that way behind. So it's uh, definitely not a challenge, rather it's an opportunity always. Uh, so I think uh, Nine is definitely going to prove uh, very well in this field. And especially for businesses as well. And it presents its challenges as well as opportunities. And I'd love to hear from both of you, Amar and then uh, Richard, on how you have fa you, your company is facing this challenge from a business perspective. And what are the opportunities that you've found in terms of reaching out? And I was really impressed, you know, when I went to the website, I found just so much. I mean, it was almost like an NGO. There's a, there's a great product. We know that. But there was also so many uh, CSR activities and just so much public outreach. I found that very, very impressive. So uh, please go ahead, Amar. So what I'd like to add here first, like uh, since we are talking on World Menstrual Hygiene Day, so why uh, we dedicate this day, uh, 28th of May, as a World Menstrual Hygiene Day, I think that's quite worthy to mention here to all the listeners here, uh, because uh, a period cycle uh, really comes up on every 28th day, and that lasts for five days. So 28-5 is the day like that uh, is you can dedicate it globally for World Menstrual Hygiene Day. And uh, on this day, uh, two years back, when we launched nine on 28th of May, 2018, so even we launched the nine movement and the same was supported by Padman Akshay Kumar and Shabana Ajbiji and many more other dignitaries. So that was the first kind of conclave in the country uh, where we got all the influencers to talk more openly about uh, uses of sanitary napkins and adopting proper menstrual hygiene practices. And nine even took uh, the awareness campaign to the international cricket grounds where we really displayed uh, pads on the cricket grounds in West Indies and in New Zealand and even Indian cricket because the cricket is the most followed up sport and uh, having such a big uh, viewership. So even through the in-stadium brandings and on televisions, we really displayed packs of nine sanitary napkins, dead stock period. So that is the way like we are really uh, creating a brand awareness as well and uh, like uh, really creating new consumers. Uh, who can really uh, like uh, come easily switch over to this uh, uses of sanitary napkins from old methods that they are really uh, suffering because of that. So it's been a great two-year journey for Nine. Uh, yes, we did start on 28th May 2018. Uh, feels fabulous. It's also our second anniversary, I must say that. And uh, 28th May is something we always, always celebrate back in Nine. Uh, this year, uh, the challenges are very different. Over the last two months, we've learned how to keep our brand alive in a very, very uh, trying and challenging uh, scenario. And I must say, you know, uh, this is where our founder's experience, Amar's experience in having going through a lot of hardships and his vision and support has really come in handy. Uh, you know, on 21st of March, I must say it, uh, when the country came to a standstill with the lockdown, we were all, all, you know, gripped with fear and nothing else. Um, Amal woke us up. He showed us the way. 
and over there i think nine has found a new passion a new energy and a new kind of bonding within the team uh, it's been a very very emotional last two months for all of us um so yes um uh, in trying times you know the going only gets while it gets tougher the uh, the real tough people get a lot stronger and we've learned that we feel very very confident of nine today also over the last one one and a half months while we realize that it's our responsibility uh to ensure sanitary hygiene for women out there because as you said they are not going to stop bleeding bleeding is going to happen every month so our napkins even in covid must be out we also realize that for india there was so much of supply disruption we just simply have to not only continue working but step up step up our production and distribution to fill any kind of gaps that were happening in the market and not only the market but this was a time where government reached out to us or we reached out to the government also in several places a lot of ngos reached out to us to see how we could help them there are cases there are states where we provided product free of cost but we could do that only in a limited way being a startup uh, in a, in a lot of places we provided support uh, in the form of uh, product at cost or marginally below cost to keep the supplies going so yes it's been uh, i won't say it's been a great time of course we are going through a very tough time from a health uh, point of view for the country but yes it's been an immense uh, opportunity for us to strengthen ourselves learn how to exist in this environment and see how we can contribute to the country you know uh, agreta maybe i'm extending or saying a little beyond what your question was but i do want to highlight that you know having come from my background where i was working with mncs all out of india looking at uh, different countries across the region your contribution does get limited you're just balancing a portfolio or in a country you're just sort of fighting for greater resources and a focus because you have a passion for the country you're working in but in the overall scheme of things for the mnc they might not be able to invest in that much over here being a part of an indian company being committed and united in vision for india for the brand uh, we've been able to do so much more for us it is you know living a dream every day along with the founders and the company to make nine happen to change the landscape of menstrual hygiene in india and contribute in every way we can and amar what do you think is uh, the future you know what are your plans for the future for nine for menstrual hygiene what if you were a futurist and i'm sure you are to be an entrepreneur what are you seeing in the future well since my childhood i, I was always uh, like uh, following the thought process of uh, pandit jawaharlal nehru ji his motto that and miles to go before we sleep so finally uh, when like uh, when i compare uh, the data as uh, china like the uses is almost 90% or 100% so in india we see that out of 35 crores uh, of menstruating girl and woman only 7 crores or 8 crores are using sanitary napkins so definitely our uh, task is really uh, to make like every uh, woman in the country start using sanitary napkins or adopt proper menstrual hygiene practice Uh, so that is the task that we are seeing and focusing on uh, so being a business opportunity on one part it's a social responsibility for every one of us and for that only uh, we had created this chain of nine and this nine movement came up with a thought that we all those who are using sanitary napkins they can be the biggest influencers to enroll educate and like enhance this uses in the country so because five days a month 60 days a year means two uh, months of every year a girl or a female who is not using uh, a proper menstrual hygiene practice is uh, under the closed rooms so with the kind of taboo and myths uh, we have in the society so i think uh, i'll really appeal from all the listeners over here that uh, we should really uh, be an influencer and really take this a uh, task it's a social responsibility of everyone and uh, definitely that helps uh, like the make in india campaign that has launched have been launched by our honorable prime minister so even a lot of government help is also there to this uh, industry uh, being a technical textile product there are subsidies so even government is like uh, doing a lot for this category the gst was abolished uh, after a lot of uh, public appeal so we see more uh, incentives coming from the government so uh, to really make this product more affordable affordable 
and we as an entrepreneur uh, so nine is committed uh, to deliver you the right quality at the right time everywhere like not even in india even you will uh, soon find our products out of the indian geography and uh, we believe nine will definitely be an international brand wonderful and uh, i must add here that uh, you know when covid lockdown was announced and um, sanitary pads for some reason were not part of the essential goods list uh, you all ran a campaign on social media that uh, you know gained some traction and it was eventually included uh, and and richa finally to you you know your final words on this journey uh, with a product which is so intimate which is so personal which we all use how has that been different for you compared to your other opportunities and what is uh, you know i know i'm sure it it, it uh, imbibes a lot of purpose and um, well, how do you see this evolving and uh, the future um so firstly it was an immense learning or enlightening uh, moment for me you know when i started working on this category i did realize that yes there was a lot of shame around it but having lived in urban area with very progressive parents you know moved around uh, in in nncs i didn't really realize the amount of shame or taboo that was around this category so working in the markets that was my first observation and i did feel women somewhere were big proponents of the shame that we were carrying in this category so i would just say that each and every woman this uh, world menstrual hygiene day owes it to herself to help us break the shame and there are a lot of small steps each women can take or each or even men can take first of all never hide when you're buying this product you're buying it you need it it's a good thing that women in your house are healthy and they need this product secondly if your daughter starts menstruating do not discourage her from sports or going out or telling boys or girls in a class that she is now menstruating there should be no shame about it the minute we tell her never talk about it hush her down in a way we stifle her confidence her growth so these are the small things i would really request everyone to do let's just talk about it let's break the shame and let's ensure we have a very healthy india with healthy women who are safe absolutely i think break the shame is absolutely the need of the r every day every week every month because every day every week every month some young girl is starting her period and this is not the experience that she needs to have where she is ashamed of her body and what it's doing to her in fact it's a period of growth and beautiful change and really a life giving force so uh, the period is beautiful and i'm really glad to have both of you join me for this conversation to talk about it and i found it so affirming to engage with a company a make in india company i think the post covid world is going to have us turn more towards products that are made in our country so it's really nice that to have found a company that engages so well with social responsibility in such a seamless way and has done so from the very start so i think uh, i wish you the very best i really commend you for your commitment to uh, not only your product and quality and the biodegradable aspect of it but also to the girls and the women you are servicing through this product who need to be empowered in different ways even if it means earning a little money i just think it's it's just wonderful on levels uh, nine will be able to change the lives of the girls and the women uh, who it touches so thank you again very much so and uh, thank you outlook for hosting this webinar and today being menstrual hygiene day please go ahead and talk to somebody about menstruation it could be someone in your family someone outside your family it could be someone who works for you whoever it may be talk to them about it in the way that it needs to be spoken of which is a life affirming force a life producing force and something beautiful that must be experienced by all women and something healthy as richard rightly pointed out so thank you everybody and have a great day stay safe in these covid times and take care of your health and that of your loved ones thank you Thanks a lot. Thanks, Ajita. Thank you. 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 Th